Hi, so this is uh, section 6.3 from Math 336. And today we're going to uh, look at the third and by far the superior numerical method for uh, numerically solving differential equations. And this is the uh, so-called Runge Kuta method or the RK4 method. And the reason why it's called the RK4 method is because it is actually order four, which means that if you divide your step size by 10, then the error will be divided by 10 to the fourth, which is 10,000, which is a lot. So um, this is um, by far the, the most uh, popular of the methods. Those other two methods that we discussed before, the Euler method and the improved Euler method, they're important to learn because um, this method is, is based on those, but those other methods aren't typically used in practice. Um, this is the method that is uh, normally used. There are other methods as well um, that are also uh, very accurate methods, but this is, um, this is one that does get used quite commonly because it's very simple and very accurate. So we're going to be uh, solving uh, this initial value problem. Again, the same initial value problem where our, um, we have dy dx is equal to uh, this, this formula, f of x, y. And to approximate these, uh, this differential equation, um, all we need to do is be able to evaluate this function. And that's it. Um, we're going to approximate the solution again at evenly spaced points and the spacing between the points is going to be H. Um, so we're going to start at X naught and then X naught plus H is X one and X one plus H is X two and so on. So um, those are the points we'll approximate the solution at and these will give us values Y one up to Y n and those will approximate the true values of the true solution. So what, whatever these actual values are, these will be approxima approximations. And what's great about the um, Runge Kuta method, RK4, is that as, as I mentioned, it is an order four method. So when we divide this H by 10, then this uh, bound here will be divided by 10,000. And so that will give us a much smaller error. Okay, <clears throat> yes, as I just said. So divide the step size by 10, the error will be divided by 10 to the fourth or 10,000. Okay, so what is the RK4 method? So the RK4 method is, it's, it's not, really uh, developed geometrically. So I, I did attempt to make a geometric drawing of, of what this RK4 method is, <clears throat> but that's not, how, uh, that's not how it was developed. It was actually developed algebraically using like a Taylor series argument. So essentially you write out a Taylor series and you're looking for formulas of a certain type so what the RK4 method is doing is instead of um, just looking at the initial point and then uh, taking the step length of H to get uh, an estimate of the slope and then averaging them. Um, instead, it's also gonna look at these uh, half step uh, points as well. So it's gonna go in between the points and it'll evaluate the function there and it will get uh, slope estimates from these um, half step points. And then these will be combined in some way. And the way they're combined is to guarantee that this method is order four. So that's the way the method was developed. Um, if you want to see the, all the details and um, it's pretty messy, uh, but if you wanna see all the details, uh, you can check out the Runge Kuta uh, method on Wikipedia and there they have a, a derivation of it. The textbook also provides a bit of a derivation, but they, they don't really explain like why we um, do what we do um, as well as the Wikipedia article. Anyway, so 
here it is. It's actually, although it's very complicated to try to draw a picture of this, the actual formulas are very simple. So again, we, we do the same thing that we did before. We take a step of H for X, and then we um, compute our initial slope estimate. And we're, I'm gonna follow the textbook and use these K values. Um, this is also quite common in the literature to use Ks for these slope estimates. So there's our initial slope estimate. And now we're going to do the first half step slope estimate. So we're gonna just take a half step with X and we'll do a half step for Y as well. And we'll use the K1 slope that we just uh, computed. This will give us a new uh, slope estimate, K2. And then we'll do the same thing again. We'll take another half step with X and a half step with H. And this time we're using the K2 slope that we just computed there to do this, uh, this half step. And that will give us a new slope estimate called K3. So now we have our initial slope estimate and we have two half step slope estimates. And finally, we do one more slope estimate. We take a full step using the K3 slope, which we just computed there. And this will give us our K4 slope, and that's a full step slope estimate. Okay, so remember with the improved Euler method, we're really just kind of doing like this guy and this guy. So we don't, uh, for the improved Euler method, we don't actually uh, do this, right? So may maybe I'll, let me say this again. Euler method, just this. Improved Euler method does this and this. And what does the Runge Kuta method do? it adds two half step slopes into the computation. And then it takes those four estimates, those four slope estimates, and it does a weighted average of the slopes. And these values here are, um, again, it comes from like a Taylor series argument, or in the textbook they mention it's, it's sort of coming from uh, Simpson's rule for um, integration, numerical integration. But you see it's a, it's a weighted average, right? So um, this is one, two, two, one. Those add up to six, and then we're dividing by six. So it's like a weighted average, but we're putting more weight on these half step slope estimates. So twice as much weight on those half step estimates, and then um, less weight on the initial estimate and the final estimate. And that gives us our final slope estimate of K. And then we just take a full step using this K slope that we just computed. So that's the method. Um, it's super easy to implement. So we'll implement this in Julia and you'll see it's, it's trivial to implement this, but the accuracy is just out of this world. It's amazing. It's very, very accurate. So um, to get an appreciation for how accurate it is, let's start by uh, doing our example that we did in the last two lectures. Um, and, and since the RK4 method is more involved, we're only going to do uh, two steps of it. So we'll just use a step size of 0.25. So that'll give us um, an estimate um, at x equals 0.25 and another estimate at x equals 0.5. But even though we're just doing um, two steps of this RK4 method, you'll see that it's actually more accurate than the improved Euler method um, that, that we did in the last section. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do this. <clears throat> Okay, so first thing, uh, we have our, our function and our initial point that we had from before. And now we will compute uh, x1. And this will be 0 0.25. Remember, the step length now is, uh, step size is two, uh, 0.25. Okay, now that we've ha we have our x1, we're going to compute k1. This is f of x0 why not? So that's the slope estimate at the initial point. And this will be x minus y. So it'll be 0 minus 1. So we'll get minus 1. And then 
K2. Uh, K2 is our first half step slope estimate. So we're gonna do X naught plus one half times H and we will do Y naught plus one half H times K1. <clears throat> and uh, let me see. So on the computer, I, I did this first step on the computer already. So that should give us a uh, negative 0.75. Then we do our second half step slope estimate. And this time we're going to use the K2 slope. And that gives us negative 0.78125. And now K4, this is a full step. So we'll use the value of X1, because that's our full step. And we'll do a full step with K3. And that gives us negative 0.55468.75. OK, and then finally, we do our weighted average. So this is 1 sixth times K1 plus 2K2 plus 2K3 plus K4. And we get negative 0 0.76953125. That's our final slope estimate. And now we can update uh, y. So this gives us y1, which is y0 plus h times, times k. And that gives us 0 0.80761718175. There we go. That is our first uh, step. And now we will do our second step. So let me just um, highlight. So there we've got our first step. There's x1 and y1. OK. Next, x2 is x1 plus h, 0 0.5. k1 is going to be f of x1, y1. So this is our initial slope estimate. Uh, let me see. I just need to update my x on here. So 0.25 and I've got the correct y value. Okay, so good to go. K1 is going to be um, negative 0 K2, this is our half step. So we'll do one half, how did I write it up? Yeah, one half H, one half H and a half step using the K1 slope. These formulas are actually not too hard to remember if you just think about the uh, half steps and so on. Okay. So that is negative 0 0.36291503903906250625. All right, I'm clearly running out of room here. So let me move that over. Okay, now K3. This is our second half step, slope estimate. But this time we will use K2. 
So K3. Negative 0 0.38725. 28076171875. Okay, all the digits to be very precise. And now K4. So K4 is a full step. So this will be X2 and then Y1 plus H times the K3 slope. And what does that give us? So I'm just gonna fix that. Oops, uh, what does that give us? So K4 is negative 0 0.21 0 0.8 0 0.3 9 8 5 5 9 5 7 0 3 1 2 okay how many digits is that one, two, three, four, six, seven. 17 digits. So, so really um, uh, float, float 64 or double precision is only good for about like 16 digits or so. So, um, but still um, this is probably um, the best representation for this uh, number on the computer. Um, okay, so now we will do our weighted average. So our weighted average is k is equal to 1 sixth k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4. And we get negative 0 0.37812. Four four zero nine one seven nine seven, and finally, uh, y two is y one plus h times k, and we get zero point seven one three zero eight. Five six five one three nine seven seven zero five one, and that is that is it. So there is our our value for y, and that's our value for x. Okay, so I'm going to uh, draw up a table to summarize these results and we'll look at the error compared to the uh, actual solution. So I will do that, I'll be right back. Okay, got it. So I just brought the improved Euler method from last lecture so that we could compare these, uh, the accuracy of the improved Euler method with RK4. So here are the results. Um, there it is. So I'll just leave the other numbers up there, but the numbers that we're looking at comparing, because we didn't, um, we didn't do the same step size, so we can't compare every point. In particular, we can't really compare this point here at uh, x equals 0.25 because we didn't have an x equals 0.25 up here. So we'll just have to compare the very last number. Um, so here's the true value of the solution. 
And I just wrote down like one more digit. So all these numbers down here are actually to um, six decimal places, rounded to six decimal places. Um, because if I don't round to six decimal places, then you these these numbers start looking. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's this is uh, six decimal places instead of up, up here. I guess I was using six. Here I was using five. Okay. Anyway, so. Um, Look at the accuracy of this. So here we have 7130. So we have four correct digits, whereas up here we only had two correct digits of the true answer, right? And you can see that in the error because there's two zeros, two zeros here. Uh, but down here we have four correct digits. We have four zeros in the error. So it's a very small error that we're seeing here. And this is quite amazing because um, you, you think of uh, how much work that was. It really wasn't that much work. Like how many times did we evaluate the, the function here? So there was um, four function evaluations per iteration. So in total, we had um, eight function evaluations. in total. So there's only eight function evaluations. And how many function evaluations did we uh, do up here with the improved Euler method? So this was going to be, um, let's see, I'll just make this smaller like that. So how many function evaluations? Well, the improved Euler method requires two function evaluations uh, per iteration, and there's five iterations. So in total, this was 10 function evaluations. Um, so that is, that is pretty good. Um, so it was about, about the same amount of work. It was actually less work, but we got like twice the accuracy. I mean, if you could say it that way. I mean, so um, a better way to say it is it was 100 times better. So two extra function, uh, two fewer function evaluations and a hundred times better. So that is, that is remarkable um, how accurate it is. But to really get a sense of how accurate this RK4 method is, we should definitely uh, head over to the code and let's see one, how easy it is to implement this method. And then the second thing is we'll see how accurate it is. Um, we're going to be plotting this stuff, and I think the plots are just going to line up. We won't even be able to see a difference between the true solution and the approximation. So let's go have a look at that. OK, so here we are on my computer. So I'll open up Julia, get the Zoom thing out of the way. So there's uh, Julia. Make that a little bit bigger. OK, perfect. OK, so we're in Julia. And I think uh, last time we were, uh, we had a file that we were editing. So uh, again, this is going to be on my desktop, I believe. So let me just have a look at my desktop. Uh, yeah. So there, there is the, the file right there. So I'm going to open this using my favorite editor. Um, but feel free to use whatever text editor you uh, prefer. Oh, desktop. Desktop Euler. OK, so I'm still calling it Euler, although um, we're, now we're doing more than Euler. We're doing this Runge Kuta. Uh, method. Let me turn up my brightness. Okay. So, uh, so what? Do, how do we implement this uh, Runge Kuta method? Um, so we'll just copy this, and we will paste it, and we're going to change uh, the name to RK4. Okay. And maybe I'll zoom in a bit so we can see this better. Okay, 
All right, good. So, um, so what do we need to change? Well, we don't have to change very much. So we have the K1, that's the same. Now K2, this is one of those half step uh, uh, slope, uh, slope estimates, right? So we're going to change this to plus uh, H divided by two. And we're also going to do a half step here for the Y value as well. Okay, now the next one is the same. It's going to be K3, but now instead of K1, we're going to do uh, K2. And then now we do a full step, right? So now it's K4 is equal to F of X, uh, the full step, and then YN plus H times K3. And then finally, we need to uh, update this. So this will be 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4. And then that is divided by 6. And that is it. Yeah, that's it. That's all we had to do. All right. So let's see, we'll run this code. Um, maybe I'll, I'll omit this. I'll omit this code here for the, for the moment where we looked at the um, errors. Let's just play around with it and visualize the plot. Um, okay, so let's do, hmm, what shall we do here? Maybe we will we'll plot all three of them. Maybe that's a good idea. So I'll change this to RK4 and I'm going to do five steps here as well. So we'll just do five steps of each. And so this will be the R, oops, R, let's see, RK4 and five steps. And I think that's good. I think we're good. And that's all commented out. Okay, so we'll look at the second example after. And now we will include, um, let's see, desktop Euler. Okay, and we should see a plot show up. Probably have to make this smaller to make room for that plot. Okay, so here is the plot. Now it just took a bit of time. Uh, Julia does have to do some compilation, especially when loading these uh, packages like plots and data frames. So that, that can take a little bit of time sometimes, but now when, when I run it a second time, it's gonna be fast. Ish, fast ish. There, now it's, now it's um, noticeably faster, okay. So let's have a look at this. We'll zoom in and uh, I don't know. Let's see. So the RK4, the, those are the, the purple. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. I mean, it looks like RK4 and um, the improved Euler method are basically the same. We're gonna have to look more carefully at it. Maybe we'll see um, a difference when we look at the more difficult example. Um, but this is what we see here. Um, maybe let's let's do this table here and we'll we'll look have a look at this. Uh, let's see, what do I need to change here? Um, oh I want to add like an extra row to this table. So I am going to um, let's see, what do I want to do? Uh, one second, I'm just going to get this set up. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. So uh, what I did is I, I added an extra array to store the results for uh, RK4. And then in here, you see, I'm still going to do the same N. So um, 5, 50, 500. So each time I'm doing 10 times as many steps and we'll see what happens with the error in each of these cases. 
And uh, let's see, so Euler results I'll put in here. And then I run the improved Euler, store the result there. And then I run RK4, store the result there. And then I compute their errors. And I add this result to the table and then I'll display the table. Okay, I think we're good to go. So let's run this. And hopefully this table will fit nicely. It does fit up sort of nicely. Um, no, I think I need to, I need to go up a bit because it's doing like a dot, dot, dot. There we go. Now we can see the values. Okay, so as we, as we saw last time, um, every time that we do 10 times as many steps with the Euler method, the error gets divided by 10. Uh, we do 10 times as many steps with improved Euler, the error is divided by 100 approximately. And here we see that the error is divided by 10 to the four. So we go from minus seven to minus 11 to minus 15. And we sort of run into, um, we, we, we run into the, the fact that we only have about 16 digits of precision with uh, float 64. So you can see it's actually doing uh, computations in float 64. Now, uh, Julia actually has another type called big float. I guess we could run it with big float and then see if we get like a lot more accuracy. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll do that, but this is pretty typical with uh, double precision that you kind of bottom out at about uh, 10 to the 15, 10 to the minus 15, 10 to the minus 16 or so. That's about as good as you can get. And it looks like we're actually losing accuracy as we, um, as we continue our calculation. And that's due to um, probably some cancellation error and round off error that's occurring there. So uh, let's, let's do this one more time in um, using big floats and let's see uh, if this pattern continues. Okay, so I had to wrestle with that a little bit. Um, I kept uh, computing things with uh, this high precision big float, but I was storing it inside of um, an array that was only uh, storing uh, double precision, float 64. And so I was getting things like this where I was like, everything is big float, but why is it only going to like, 10 to the minus 18, that doesn't make any sense. And, and that was because, for example, this, uh, this RK4, I forgot to make sure that it was the same type as uh, B. So I had to make sure that um, B is of type big float. And so this array will be a, an array of big floats. And that was the trick. And now we can see uh, that the accuracy does now uh, continue. So we have minus 7, 11, 15, 19, 23, 27, 31. So each time we are uh, dividing the error by 10,000 or 10 to the 4. So that is the way that works. I also had to make some changes up here as well. Uh, the same thing with the arrays inside of the functions. I had to make sure that they were the same type so what I did is I computed H and then made sure it was the same type as H. So that is the way uh, to use big floats in Julia. Uh, very cool, but it does take a long time. It took longer to run. Uh, big floats are slower. They're more precise, but they're slower. So doing like 5 million uh, times three <laughs> iterations, it, it took a little bit of time, uh, not, not too much time. Um, Maybe I'll, I'll time it and then just to give you a, a sense of the difference between the two. So um, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it without, with, with the big floats. And then after that's finished running, I'm going to delete this, um, put it back to just the normal, normal floats. So maybe I'll, I'll make you wait with me. So let's wait, wait this out. We'll see how, how long it takes. So, so big floats are gonna take longer. Um, the reason why doubles are so fast is because um, they're, they're happening right on the CPU. So the CPU has, uh, is designed to uh, perform uh, 
arithmetic and double precision, but it's not designed at the hardware level to do uh, arithmetic with um, arbitrary big float precision. So that's why um, it's taking longer. Shouldn't take much longer now. There it is. So it took about a minute to do this calculation. And now let's do the same thing with doubles. And you see that it took less than a second. So uh, that's why you probably don't want to use the higher precision. You want to stick with double or sometimes people even use single precision if they really want speed and they don't really care too much about the precision. So um, all right, so now let's let's have a look at uh, let's see. Let's have a look at the second example. So maybe I'm going to comment out this this first example here. So let's just comment this out. Um, like so. And then let's uncomment this. And let's see, what do we want to do here? Uh, I don't want to do so much improved Euler. Maybe we'll do what we did uh, before above. We'll just do an RK4 here. And we'll just do uh, the same number of points, so 50 points. Although maybe that's like a little bit unfair because now we're, we're actually doing um, twice as many evaluations here. So maybe let's like have the same number of function evaluations. So this would be like 100. Um, this is going to do two per iteration, so 50. And then let's just do like 25, right? So 20, uh, 25 times four. So now they're doing the same number of function evaluations. So let's compare them. Uh, that way. And we will want to uh, plot three plots. And this will be RK4, oops, RK4 <clears throat> with n equals 25, uh, improved Euler with 50, and Euler method with 100. Okay, I think this is a good, a good comparison to see, see what this looks like. Okay, so let's run this code. And that was pretty fast. And let's zoom in on this. Okay, so what do we notice here? Well, um, again, the uh, Euler method is not doing very well, especially around x equals eight. The improved Euler method, I can visually see that there's a difference between the true function and the value of the improved Euler method uh, right there. But I don't see really any difference. It looks like these, so I'm just looking at like the corner points. Um, maybe I should put some, some dots on here, um, although that kind of obscures it, but I think it, it highlights the idea better. So let me add some markers to this. How did I wanna do this? All right, okay. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I need to add a shape. Well, maybe a shorter way to say it is a marker. I want it to be a, a dot and I want it to be um, small and I want it to, um, yeah, no, that's fine. That's what I want. Okay. And do that again and again. Okay. Uh, all right. There we go. So added some added some dots there. So now you can see. So I'm just looking at the dots. I'm not looking at the way the way plot works. It's always like draws it with a straight line. Those are still kind of big. Maybe maybe I should do this. There, that's a bit better. There we go. It's almost too small. Almost too small. A little too small. Oops. How's that? that? That's better. That's better. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So the way plot works is it just it just puts the points down and then it draws a straight line between the points. And um, if you do that enough with enough points, it looks like a curve, but it's not really a curve. It's just a piecewise linear function. So that's why I I don't really care that you know 
this straight line here is not matching the blue line. What, what I care about is the fact that the purple dot is basically right on top of that blue line. And I think that that basically happens everywhere. Maybe if we comment out those other plots, we can uh, get rid of some of this noise. And um, let's just look at that. The RK4. Yeah, that looks, that looks fantastic. That looks fantastic. Okay, so in order to get like a plot that really looks like uh, what the blue curve, so let's let's just do that now. Uh, oh, maybe I will. Um, I'll leave this here. I'll just comment that out, and let's do let's do one more experiment here. So um, let's do. So I'm going to do uh, x4, y4, and let's just see like how many points I need. Maybe let's just try 100 and see what that looks like. And um, let's see, replace 4, 4, and this is going to be um, n equals 100 steps. And and uh, I just I just want to look at the curve. Um, I don't want these dots to get in the way. So let's see what that looks like. And is there is there any difference? So I see like a little bit of blue uh, sticking sticking through here and there. So let's maybe try uh, a few more points. So let's just do like two hundred. Not a big deal. And now how did we do? So I, I, can't, I can't really see the blue line anymore. I think it's completely obscured by the orange line. So, oh, uh, maybe I should update that. Update that uh, legend here. There. So now it's, now it's true. So that's, that's 200 steps with the uh, Runge Kuta uh, method, right? So that, that looks pretty good. So if you just, if you just want to have like a very good uh, plot of your solution, then you can just use numerical differentiation, uh, sorry, numerical, um, so solve the uh, differential equation numerically. And uh, yeah, you can get a really nice uh, accurate plot of your solution. No integration or anything required. Um, okay, so, that's a, that's a good place to stop. And that brings us to uh, the end of uh, 6.3. Uh, there is one more section in here, 6.4, which um, I think is actually very valuable, but um, typically we don't cover it in this class. But I do encourage you, uh, if, if you wanna know how um, differential equations are solved numerically, then uh, 6.4 is definitely worth uh, a read. Uh, to see how things are done. So, um, all right, I'm going to stop there. Thanks for watching.